Sweet. Oh, and I need the meeting mats up. Tuesday. June second. All right. All right. Okay, let's real quick. Um so uh yeah, let's hit this guy first. So um secret, secret. Sweet. It looks like we need to format this with black. Um, I haven't formatted. All right. This looks fine. This is perfect. Um, let's see. Um, oh, let's see. Are you doing this all? As okay, let's see. Um, oh, nice, good job. Okay, okay, but then here we still don't want this because it'll close it on its own um, when we exit from this. And I don't think we need self dot mem equals. Are, are you sure we need this? Oh, actually, uh, like if you remove that, it's too complicated doesn't work okay yeah. all right let's see and uh, it needs that in parallel also like I tried moving it in context but there are a couple of functions which use oh no it shouldn't be in context I meant to delete those comments oh sorry um, let's see uh, my bad sorry I, there was a bunch of comments and then I realized some things and then I said other things uh, okay um, Let's see, this was secrets. How's it going, Himachu? Um, yeah, I'm good. What about you? It's going all right. Let's see. Okay, so this needs to be... Okay, so base secret A source. Oh, it's because we've got this issue with the, um, it's probably, let's see, did it, 
Oh, it hasn't commented yet. Okay. Maybe it will catch it soon. Let's see. Um, so this is one that LGTM has been catching sometimes, but it looks like it's kind of lagging on doing the review. So, um, let's see. Let's make sure we're all consistent here. Um, and let's just format this with black. So... Okay, um, so I think what we actually need to do here is, self, this is, let's see, I think we need to make sure that we're calling both of, um, uh, I think we need to make sure that we're calling both of the, um, both of the init methods um, from both of the base classes. Uh, uh, no, we can honestly just get away with calling the one. So I think that's actually what we need to do here is we need to just, I mean, we can get away with calling the one. So basically, if you just did, um, let's see, this, yeah, then it will end up calling the first one. In which case, I think we can get rid of self dot mem. Um, so, I mean, we really should uh, do both. Uh, but at a minimum, oh, okay. At a minimum, this will make it. Yeah, okay, do the right thing. Yes. All right, sweet. So let's see. It's weird that it includes those quotation marks. That's very weird that it includes the trailing quotes. Huh, I wonder what's up yeah, with that. Actually, I just noticed that. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, let's see. The point is to have a giant giant warning banner um so that works um weird stuff is okay uh okay so uh, you want to include anything more in the warning message? uh no that's fine as long as it just says insecure in big letters then that's that's okay. what people need to know yeah um so let's see um there should be some calls to init that will serve as examples for us here um uh, where's the base class in it? It's in one of the CLI ones, I think. Uh, no? Maybe got rid of it? Let's see. We might have gotten rid of it when we did that merging the configs. Let's see. I could have sworn there was one of these in here where we're calling a different base or we're calling both base classes. All right, well, let's just do this. Um, nope, all right, I guess not. Huh, I swear this exists somewhere. All right, whatever. Um, okay. All right, in this case. All right, so that's just, that's like, that's like the hack way, but we should really do it this way where we explicitly call both, um, both constructors. Um, although I believe there's a way to do this with super. I'm just not sure. Uh, I think I've never been able to make it work for some reason. Uh, let's see. To get a specific base class out of it. So yeah, we should just do this. And then it should give us both. Yeah, okay. So. Uh, So call both 
constructors. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna make some notes here. So. So secret plugin type PR, uh, we need to pull the constructors to avoid having to populate self.mem uh, uh, or to show as self.mem. Uh, oops, okay. And, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, Alright, uh, Hamantra, I, didn't, I don't think I mentioned, but I'm having some really bad allergies today, so I'm going to have to, like, mute you guys every once in a while and blow my nose, but sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Something is really killing me today. Okay. Um, all right. And then let's see. What else do we see here? So we want to make config the same value, um, same same wording. Um, and let's put the little definition on it. Um, and then let's also, we shouldn't need this. I don't think, right, because a secret... Yeah, this will set the uh, this will set that. So we should be able to do the test. See if it works still. All right, great. All right, so this is a cool thing. Um, if you do, and this will help. So like last week, um, uh, I think it was Saksham. You were the one who, or wait, was it? It was. Saksham or Himachu that did the pull request titling or the commit titling like we talked about? Somebody did. I can't remember. Yes. Oh, yeah, I did that. Yes, good job. Um, so this will help with that. Um, how's it going, Naeem? So this is going to help with the um, uh, making things into smaller, or like making what you want um, in a pull or in each commit. So you can do git add dash p, and then you can say which stuff you want to add to this commit. And uh, so you can even say like, okay, I want to add part of this chunk um, or not part of this chunk. Um, and it gives you some instructions here. Um, and so then we can go through and we can create, create commits that are exactly what we want. Um, so let's see. All right. So, and then for example, what we'll end up with here is, um, right, let me make this clear. So this is what's staged, which is just that first getting rid of that, that parent, um, the init method and the um, in the context, and this is what's still not staged. So if we do git status, um, you can see that, okay, there's parts of this file are staged, which was that first part, and then parts of it are still not going to be in this commit, right? Because whatever's staged in green here is what's actually going to be in the commit. So we're going to do git commit, um, and then we can say, uh, you know, secret, uh, any, remove, init method. Um, use parent text class so use base context class init method and then we can add the rest of them as um, Um, we can add the rest of them as the other changes, right? So secret, um, any um, consistent names for config in init method. All right. Um, and then let's 
take a look at that again. Um, or wait, this is our test. So. All right, and then the other thing I was saying was we probably don't need to do this here because it should close the, um, it should write out the file when it exits the context of the um, any secret, um, like the, 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 the main class. Um, so let's check the test real quick here. So test secret, test any. Okay, so name temporary file, nice. Set git. Okay, secret store. Nice. Okay, great. So let's just do this so that we um, open and close the whole thing. Uh, okay. So, so we want to, we're missing one of the, um, we missed one of the um, context entries here. Um, so we just did, um, let's see, where was it? Okay. So what we should also do is add this to save and load so that they can, you know, use the get and set methods. Um, if we end up like, we should modify save and load so that we can use um, the secret stuff in that too. And then that'll be a little bit easier here. Um, but so for now, let's just look at this and say, so we had was this, right? Where we had secret store equals any secret. Um, and then the file name. And then we said with secret store, um, so yeah, with secret store as secret context. So what we did here was we did, um, da, 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 or wait, okay, let's just swap it. All right. So what we ended up with here was, um, so it's going to do this any secret, um, and then it's going to hit init, but it's going to do, um, the, so it's going to, the first thing we did was we created the class, right? And then, so that was the init method. And then we called the class. So secret um, base. So we called the class, which is this method here, which returned a context. And then we a did the a enter method of the context, um, which is actually going to be... Um, the a inter method of memory source context because there is none in base secret context. Um, and I believe that doesn't really do much. So um, uh, source memory. Yeah, okay. So there's basically nothing going on there. So we're going to skip the whole um, actual writing out to the file. Um, so what we should probably do here is do something like, um, flip, um, so we should read the file and check that the contents are correct. Um, oops. So this inspect.cleanDoc is kind of just nice because we can throw these blocks in here to make it look nice. Um, so let's see. Okay. Superfile.name. And then we also need a tear down here. Okay, um, so and the way that this should look, right, Does is... Close when you exit the context manager? Uh, you never entered the context of the name temporary file. So you create the name temporary file, 
but yeah, unless we unless we did dot enter and then we did dot exit, yeah, oh. then it's not going to do that. Yeah, so this should be right. Foo equals bar and Steins equals gate. Uh, oops. And then we'll just copy this here. Okay, and let's see what happens. Oops. Very true. Inspect is not defined. Okay. Um, okay, so there's nothing in that file. So... All right, let's see. Wait, I remember opening that file in VS Code and like checking. You did? Okay, let's see. Um, so we've got something, I something's off. It was yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's see. Self.secretfile.name. So like, uh, you just deleted the dump FD call, right? So uh, will it dump it? Yeah, I did delete the dump FD call, so let's try this. But the thing is that we should, the file source should be doing that. Okay, so yes, we did end up with some stuff in the file, which is good. Um, but let's see what's going on there. Oh, okay, it's just in the other order. Um, all right, well, I don't know if that order is going to be reproducible, but let's see how it goes. All right, so that's good, but let's see. This is not exactly great because um, we should be hitting the A enter and the A exit methods of any source. So maybe actually this needs to be reversed, and that's why um, it might be ending up doing the base secret methods, so which are just nothing. No, okay. Um, okay. Because let's see, the thing is that any source, um, oops, any source is, yeah, file source, so file source. Wow, inheritance. Um, fun stuff, not. Uh, let's see. So, a enter should call self.open and. Okay, maybe that's what's going on here. Do we have a read write on this guy? Yeah, we do. And read write defaults to false. Um. Okay. Uh, what and, does read write do? Uh, well, it won't write the file back. Um, yeah, it won't. It won't write out the file unless read write is true. Um, and for sources, that's like you know, it might often be what we want um, because people aren't sort of expecting that we're going to write back the prediction data. Um, but for the secrets, we're probably going to write it back. So we probably want to do. Um, uh, did we add that? No, I don't think we did add that replace method. Saksham, didn't didn't we talk about doing some kind of replacement on the classes in uh, base? Yeah, we didn't. We didn't do that. Yeah, okay. That. All right, so let's just do yeah. All right, so. Let's see, I will just grab this stuff and we'll set this to true. Uh, that'll be config, right? Uh, Add config. Oh yes, thank you. Okay, let's try that again. All right, there we go. All right, yeah, read write was false. 
Okay, um, and then allow empty maybe should also be still false. Um, all right, and now I think we are what we should be here. So yeah, we're properly leveraging the saving and loading from the file source. All right. Um, let's see. So what did we all do here? Oh yeah, and let's go. Okay, that stuff looks good. All right, and then let's also, while we're at it, we'll open that issue to, let's see. We'll need, okay, so what did we do? Uh, oh, we found, found that we needed a new config with read, write, defaulting to true. Um, and we found that, let's see, we found that, um, I'm a little bit worried about this thing. Um, let's see, we should probably just keep that other block down there. Um, that was sort of a good first pass to help us there, because this is probably going to do... Uh, here, actually, this will be good. This way we won't mess with the order. So foo equals bar. All right, and now we're able to check all the file contents without worrying about the order. Great. All right. Uh, oops. Oops. All right, and then so we can do this thing again. And we can say the config, okay, and and then you know, so for example, with this commit stuff, we're doing secret any um, uh, default read. Uh, set config read right to d default to true. And then git c test secrets any, um, you know, uh, let's see, open and close before or close before try and close and reopen before attempting git. All right, let's see. Um, okay. Oh, and this was, um, Oh, this isn't a bug. We need to make it so that, um, so let's see, let's take a look at this and somebody can jump on this at some point, but high level. So with load, for example, it takes the sources um, and we can do something where maybe if it takes, let's see, uh, with source, source context. So if args, it loads specific ones. I'll, all records are loaded. So we could probably modify this so that it says, all right, if this uh, we can do, you know, um, union um, source or union base source and uh, secret or base secret. And then it can say, you know, if is instance source or if is instance uh, base secret, uh, then basically, you know, you do dot record or you do got dot git. Um, and obviously you won't be grabbing all the secrets. Um, 
So that way we could uh, use the, you know, the save and load with the secrets too. Um, that'll probably be helpful. Uh, let's see. So. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. All right, uh, so let's see. Modify, save, and load to take um, either secret or base secret or um, base source. Um, if is instance secret to get um, otherwise maintain same functionality. All right. Oops, I forgot to change the title. Uh, let's see. I level save slash load equal to work with. Okay, and then we'll just say it depends on what's the PR number? Again. Oh, here. Yeah, no worries. Okay. So, great. So, now we got this tracking, so we'll do this afterwards. Um, let's see. Um, okay. And let's see what else is going on here. So, and then you're just going into... Let's see. Uh, so, like, so you started uh, doing something else too, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. No, I stopped it immediately. After. Yeah. So, like, it's sense stuff in the header, so we don't have a way to communicate that. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, that's right. That's what you talked about the other day. Sorry, I don't think I got back to you on that yet. Okay, so let's see. Um, so payload received, headers are request headers, yeah, okay. So, oh yeah, so we probably just need to add this to the channel config to say, um, you know, something like, um, request, you know, the, the headers, um, as an input, right? And then what kind of input definition they are, um, because the headers are always going to be like, you know, a dictionary structure. So, um... Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, we probably just want to take that dictionary and 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 use it as whatever definition is specified in the channel config, right? Yes. Or what so are your what are your thoughts on this? To to the data flow. Yeah, that works. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. Let's see. So. Let's see. Um, okay. So for. Okay, it isn't bold. Oh no. I was like I thought this linked looked suspiciously bold. Okay. Um so for headers um for grabbing secret secret from request headers. Um add an option to the channel or HTTP channel config uh, and if this uh, if it's not done use the definition or add the definition name given uh, add an input with the definition name given 
and the value being the dict of HTTP headers. Okay. Okay. Does that this sound like a good description of what we're doing? Yeah. Yes, okay. Yes. Cool. Um, I'll just add that to the inputs list. Sweet. You already have at least an HTTP class. Nice. Okay. That'll be great. Yeah. So that should be a quick change there. Um, so, and then otherwise on this, um, let's see. So, let's see what this looks like right now. Um, oh, and I think we missed, oh, okay, we missed this. Let's just do this real quick here. Oh, wait. Yeah, I guess we're Let's just commit this. Okay. Um, yeah, this all looks good. So, I think what we should do right now with this is. Oh, did we just. Oh, okay, I see this was a. Let's see. So. Right, so can I just like commit suggestions right here that back these out and then we can merge this pull request and then you can open a new one doing this? Okay, so and we'll just actually throw this in here too because that's just like a minor bug fix. So, so let's do that and then let's do this. Oops. And then we'll merge this once the CI passes. Um, and uh, and then you c you can open the rest yeah, as. I added the changes to oh, you haven't you haven't added the change to this PR, but you have it ready. Uh, no, I haven't added it to the change log. Oh, you haven't added it to the change log. I, I just made it. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you probably want to like create a new branch then, and then push yeah, that I'd branch up or something. Though. All right, sweet. All right, so I'll do this, and then we'll be able to push this through, and then this will be in there. So let's see. Let's just make sure this is all good here. So yeah, this looks good. Uh, all right, sweet. So we'll just wait for this, and then we'll come back to it. All right. Is there anything else you want to talk about uh, right now, Agen? Like after this, I'll start working on the on this, like uh, whatever I had for the proposal, the data for tutorials. Yeah. Or is there anything like specific? Nope, that sounds good. I think that's the right way to go. So yeah, because I think we we just need to finish up this FMPEG stuff so that it can be um, consistent with what we want to. Because um, we we want to we want to yeah. yeah do all that stuff so we can yeah. get that release out. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll do that in the next sweet, nice. Okay, yeah, this will be great. Thank you. Um, let's see. Yeah. So wait, where is this? Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then. Okay. So. Um, this guy. Okay, so it looks like... Right. Uh, Jeremy, can I go first? Because uh, yeah. I have to go for an hour and work in between. Okay, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so yesterday you talked about... Uh, yeah, yesterday you talked about this new source. So uh -huh. can you explain that a bit uh, so that I can start working on that? Um, let's see, uh, okay. Okay, yes, okay, so. I was so, trying to read a JSON file and that was too complicated. Yeah, yeah, so, so yeah, so what this, this sort of made me realize is that, that, you know, we've got, so here's, here's, here's the state of things, right, is, is, um, so try to read a JSON file in, Different format needs a way to get uh, arb 
arbitrarily formatted JSON data or into or as a source basically right so this is this is this is essentially what happened here right you tried to read some arbitrary file, file format and we realized well okay like people format everybody formats things slightly differently right um, so there's like a lot of ways we could go about this um, but for now I think the so yeah the, so there's a lot of ways we can go about this right um, but for now the simplest way is probably to, to take something um, so sort of like it's the idea here is kind of like similar to that data flow preprocessing source and what I'm also realizing here is that you know we have that data flow preprocessing source but we sort of named it data flow source um, but in reality it, it should probably be named data flow preprocessing source and we should probably re-add that um, because that that is what it's doing whereas like you know if we had something that was a data flow source, it would be all of the records come as a result. Like that would be everything as a result of running the data flow, right? Um, whereas what we ended up with was was something that um, just runs the data flow on each record to like process it, right? Um, so what we'd be doing here is like so. There's there's two options, right? So one of them would be we have uh, how's it going, Yesh? Um, so one of them would be that we have another source that um, basically it takes a data flow um, and instead of using that data flow to, pre to, to modify every record, um, it uses the data flow to, uh, uh, it basically it runs the data flow and every single time we yield from, from the loop of the running data flow, then we'd uh, we'd use that as a record right so like we'd use the, the string context handle as the record key and then we'd use the results as the record like feature data or, or whatever the data and prediction data or something right um and but that's like a little bit complex so so the base where this is like a, a slimmed down version of that where we're basically just going to take one function right and we've got this auto op wrapping function stuff um so what we can do is basically you would supply the tree point style path to a function or just like a registered operation. Um, and then the, so that the config of this thing takes, um, so the create a new source um, where the config, actually let me maybe just like write some code because it will make more sense. Yeah, that will be better. Yeah, let's just do that. So, uh, app source. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay, that's what we want to do. All right, so DFML source. App source, right? So we've got operation. Um, and this is of type operation. Oops. Um, and let's see. Uh, or maybe this should be, let's see, yeah. This should be, yeah, this is the operation to use. Um, yeah, all right. And then we can do like, uh, is there anything else that this thing needs? Basically not, I don't think. We'll find out. Um, and then we do like, or this is up, so config. Uh, config equals up, config. Um, let's see. Um, so let's see. Um, and then part of this is also like um, we've been talking um, with. Sakshams pull request recently on um, how uh, how uh, when we did the unified config, we're still going to need a way to do like the config loading and various things that are like the config loader stuff. Um, and like this is sort of a it ties onto that where like if we get an operation and we 
or well, I guess where this will end up working. Um, so because it'll just call load and it'll do the entry point load. So um, yeah, okay. So this should be fine. Um, so what we'd end up with is something like uh, let's see. So uh, maybe if I write the test, uh, let's see. Test source, test op. Okay. It's probably a good scaffold here. Okay. So, um, uh, file data equals. So, for example, this is our JSON file, right? Um, and it's got a bunch of objects in it. Um, actually, wait, we can just make this a regular object. Um, so, uh, like, what was some, like, mm, let's see, I'll just make some shit up. Um, a is B, or let's see. ID. All right, so ID is A, B, C, right, so we've got this file in an arbitrary format, um, so file data, uh, where's our test? With temp file dot and temp temporary file as file object, um, we do file object JSON dot dump file object file data. So we basically we will write out this file data, this file. Um, seek to zero just in case. Um, and then so we will go through and we'll make our list of records here. Okay. Uh, record dot features, record i features. Okay. And then we're going to want to do. Let's see, yeah. So we will create the source. I'm sorry, this is probably not, I'm not, okay. Let me, let me explain this more as I do this. Uh, okay. Uh, no, something's off here. Uh, come on, it's not auto formatting. All right. Uh, let me just trim this down real quick. It'll start to make more sense real quick here. So, check records. And then we're going to make this the operation. Get data. And then this would be dict of stir record. All right. So test op source. So the idea here is, oops, oh, um, all right, here, all right, great. Um, Let's see, and it would be, uh, we got to do the relative path, but we'll get that. So, um, to do find 
relative Python path to get data um, and then see let's see where was this DFFML um, so there is um, oh, where was that where was that we did this recently so basically what we're doing is we dump we, we have this file with arbitrary data and we're going to write this operation that basically takes the file name and loads in the data and returns the basically like the structure of self.mem in memory uh, in the memory source um, so we're basically doing this just like it's going to be memory backed um, so that you can have you know you just define some operation that reads in the file and and puts it into memory and that way like you can read in whatever what is going on here uh, okay uh, that's weird and then that, that way you'll be able to read in whatever you want right um, so and you could also have it dump back out so but we for now we'll just do this Thanks. Um, so, okay. Uh, where is that? Again, do you do you remember where we put the? Uh, it's what we were doing the other day. Change that thing with asynchronous here. Uh, I got it. Okay. Async. Okay, yeah, here, this file. Oh, yeah, this. Um, test, df, test create. Okay. Um, oh, that's how I got around that. Okay. Um, all right, in this one, we changed the temporary directory, and then we wrote out the whole file that contained the um, things. Okay, so basically, let's, let's just say, like, C... Um, test slash df slash test df create um, and copy uh, writing out of operation and ch dir from there. Um, okay, so because you're going to end up, what you're going to want to do is you're going to do, or let's see. It's going to be something like this, right? Where if you copy this structure here, you're creating this temporary directory, you change directory to it, you write out the this function basically and it's stored as a string in this test file and then you can reference it by its like entry point name which is the way that we register things right um, and then upon uh, upon loading the config for this thing the unified config should say operation dot load so you'll end up with the operation um, actually you may end up with yeah you may not end up with the operation so you may want this this might be like the operation implementation. So op imp. And then we do, oops. Yeah, so we do something like um, op imp. So you'd end up with something like this. Um, let's see, so source context. And you do context our records. So then you make this source, you make a context class within here. Um, op source context. Um, and you have the records method. Or actually, you just take this is also a, or let's see, I guess you can just do it on here. So you do def a enter. Um, context equals memory source context and on a enter you basically just run the operation 
but you need to run the operation within a data flow. So run operation within data flow in case it has, um, you know, like imp enter. In, in case it needs, well, okay, you could do for now just run operation implementation with uh, self.op.imp.test. Um, so you can basically do self.mem equals this. Um, and then you're going to need to find a way to do find a way, a way that makes sense to pass um, the, like, you're going to need to find a way to pass the config here or something, right? Like, you're going to need to find a way to say, okay, this thing takes a file name. This is where, yeah, this is kind of tricky. Um, let's see. How do we make this less tricky? Um, you could you could make this like a little more uh, less generic, and you could just say like op file source. Um, the problem is like yeah, you'd have to have a config structure, and it would have to know about that to be able to um, to be able to like if you had multiple, so if you've run, if you run that service dev um, uh, run command, it can run a single operation. Um, and so ideally this would end up being something like that where you can run a single operation and you can specify the arguments and the inputs and the config if you need to. Um, however, uh, that might not be, I, you're going to have to play with it and you might just want to slim it down and just provide it with a file name and make that that for the moment, right? But the point here is that you'll run this operation and you'll use the output as self.mem and as long as you set context to memory source context, then basically you just run this operation and you end up with whatever the this function is basically just going to do, you know, json.loads um, file name dot read text, right? If this was a path and then you just to do re uh, format this or return appropriate uh, dict for self.mem, right? Which is just going to be this stir record uh, mapping. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Cool. All right, and I hope that we made your. If your deadline was ten o'clock, then I hope this. Uh, hope this is in time here. Um, is that enough for now, then? Uh, yeah. This. Okay. Cool. All right. Yeah. So hopefully, I mean, this is at a minimum like you can you know use this to load arbitrary file types. Uh, at, at best, we'll find a way to make this so that you could, you know, just have some arbitrary operation. You, you know, we're going to have to figure out how to do more, uh, more configuration of the the parameters there. Um, uh, but that that's sort of like, you know, cross that bridge when we get there. We can always make this like a specific one. This is like op file source or something, and then that way we can show people like hey if you have a random file type um, that you don't know how to get in um, then you can always get it in using this right and then you could use the merge command to like save it in a, a more standard format right um, so yeah all right cool so I will post this up um, uh, and I'll send you a link um, so Is there anything else you want to talk about here? Uh, no, this 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 is it. Okay. So, all right, yeah, and obviously this was not. Um, it would have been better if we had already had something like this. Um, but let's see. Uh, wait a minute. What did I do here? Up source. Oh, 
I didn't commit anything. Okay. Uh, all right, cool. Yeah, so once we have this, then it's going to be easy to do, you know, what's the arbitrary file type. But obviously right now, it's either, you know, you do, uh, you write a new source, um, which is slightly more heavyweight than what this would be, which is basically just write one function. Uh, and then this is the link. Sweet. Oops. All right. Um, let's see. Naeem, did you do you usually have a meeting around now? Do you have to run, or is there anything you wanted to talk about? Oh, we can't hear you. All right, is there anybody else who's got a uh, sort of deadline soon? Um, otherwise, I think we'll jump into Saksham stuff. All right. Um, let's see. So, Saksham. Uh, let's see. Oh, and Agen, were you going to do that input flow modification stuff? Sorry, which one? The input flow modification. So basically, like, I think what Sakshan is doing here is he had to do this data flow create command. Um, and he added some seed stuff, but he also needed to um, modify the input flow. So he used SED. Um, were you going to do that input flow modification stuff? Oh, I wasn't thinking of it. I can't do it. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. If you can, if you can do that, Which great. Was it? Um, I think. Let's see. Let's All right. Oops. Sorry. Um, uh, where'd it go? Yeah, here. So I'll put this under here. So uh, we need two before you start the operations tutorials. Um, Okay, yeah, because this is going to be good um, because we're going to use this. There's a couple places where we have these SED commands now to modify the input flow, and so it'll be good if we can get that in there um, to to make that a little bit less hacky. Sweet. Um, uh, can, can you just uh, brief on that, like, uh, what syntax are you looking for? Oh, yeah, so basically... Um, so the idea here was kind of like, so what he's doing here is we've got, you know, it's the, uh, so these SED replacements are, are saying, um, you know, it's looking at, where'd it go? Um, uh, it's at the end. Okay, let me just... equals product uh, should be the flow yeah okay so basically you're just going to modify the flow based on what they're saying here um, so for example the syntax might be like um, it's kind of going to follow this sort of syntax here so and I will just do I'm going to take this and make a comment that's just for the purposes of the other one so 
So instead of piping SED, we might have something like um, put flow or just flow even is probably fine. Um, so flow and then this would be so value product um, would have been let's see what was that uh, yeah it was this outputs right value product is in the seed it's not in the input flow no associate spec okay wait a minute so so associate spec so product equals associate spec but then we change that to image product so wait a minute so I think wait a minute okay um, I think maybe this one we can actually do without this part um, uh, what is this branch called? Uh, no, uh, MNIST normalization. All right. Okay. So I think that. Oops. Oops. Yeah. Let's see. All right. So what we wanted here is um, image product, right? So. Yeah, okay, so we can get that without doing the SED command. Um, so what we really need to focus on here is... Um, so multiplicand, instead of coming from seed, is going to come from image, right? So syntax will probably look something like this. Uh, so multiplicand. So multiplicand. So, so flu. Okay, seed image. Okay. So multiply inputs, multiplicand. Okay, and we had it. Oh, okay, wait a minute. We're saying. We're saying. Okay. Huh, let's see, how should we do this? Uh, Alright, um, so when we do dash flow, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to modify the flow dict within the data flow, and we're going to want to traverse down um, for this argument on the right hand side. So multiply dot inputs dot multiplicand and that's where we're talking about um, uh, when it talks about traverse config or traverse git um, which is going to be like the opposite of traverse set. You're going to walk down that dictionary um, and you can look at the code in traverse config git because it's pretty much the same thing. And so you do, if we have multiply.inputs.multiplicand, we would want to go um, walk through the flow and go into multiply, inputs, multiplicand. And then we want to say, okay, so it looks like it was, um, let's see, it was just seed. And then we said, okay, well, we want to get, um, you want to be able to grab it from, 
image definition in seed. Um, and let's see. And that was instead of uh, instead of uh, instead of multiple cantif. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Um, so we need like a syntax for specifying this. Um, uh, let's see. Well, I guess it's going to be sort of the same either way. Because you're either going to have a list of you're going to have a list of origin equals and then definition names, um, and, or you're going to have a list of um, just operation names mapping to the output within that operation. Okay, yeah, now that we added that other syntax, this isn't as straightforward. Um, so, let's see, what would be a good way to do this? Um, so, multiply inputs, multiply cant equals image. Yeah, ooh, we might want to hold on off on this one for a while because this is kind of like there's no I don't know if there's a good syntax for this like can anybody think of a good syntax for this because we're trying to say something like you know seed I mean I, I, we can use like the literals however that's not beautiful um, so and actually I guess if we're following the input mapping stuff then it ends up being Although I kind of feel like we should change that. Um, so it would end up being something like, um, and I believe we found out that this was supposed to be image product. Okay. So, yeah, we can always do this, actually, which would, what it would be, end up being, uh, where we just supply, like, the AST literals. Um, that would at a minimum do this, uh, because then we'd end up with something like, you know, uh, well, actually it would be multiple cant is a list, or seed is also a list. This is just very not nice looking, right? And that would give us, give us what we want. Um, It would give us what we want. It's just ugly. Um, but might be the best, best way to go right now. So basically, I mean, this is pretty minimal, minimally involved. Um, so for, uh, and we can do this right now. It's just not beautiful. Um, so when we do, when we're talking about like traverse config set, you're basically going to use this on dataflow.flow, and you're going to set the value to what the value is here, which is going to be a literal eval of whatever that is. Um, and so, uh, you know, this would be this would do the trick here. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Cool. So yeah, I guess this probably shouldn't be that much of a heavy lift. Um, so if you get time to do it, that would be great. Um, it's basically just going to be like add another thing, just like you added seed, go through every single one, do traverse config set for the uh, for the right hand equals, or and then the, the thing you're setting it to, which is the next argument of traverse set, is this thing on the left hand, um, which we really should flip this at some point. But um, all right, cool. Um, and then did it show up as referenced here? It did. Okay, great. Um, and then, other than that, um, and so then, let's see. Okay. Source DF. Okay, great. So you did the config loading here. Nice. Okay, right, let's get rid of this stuff for now, um, since we're not using it. So uh, we are using this. Oh, we are. Let's see. 
if if I don't pass it, then it will want a data flow types dot data flow. But we are passing a. Oh, of, like, I see. Level. I see. So it's ignoring it basically. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Cool stuff. All right. Good. Good. Um, also, the test one of the test is failing because it's a very long command. Okay. The command is running for a very long time. Huh. Let's see which test are we talking about here. Last time I told you right, I had to re-enter the meeting because my. Oh my yeah. Laptop. Oh, because the normalization takes forever. Yes. Yes. Huh. Let's see. Well, that's not good. Um, all right. So let me make a note for myself on here to go and check this out because we can't we can't have that timing out. That's uh, that's it's no good. Um, or well, what did it, what is exactly the error message? Um, uh, okay. So Trace back. Oh, no such file or directory normalized YAML. Um, so, I mean, I'll pull it down and run it because I want to make sure that. Okay, so where. Oh, 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 oh. Let's see. Yeah, I think it's because. Okay, oh, I that. see. I should have added the sub process for create data flow command. Uh, yeah, if you know what to do, then you know what to do. That's great. Uh, my guess is it might have been a. Uh, I think that this, the test command actually creates a new directory. Um, let's see. Uh, examples mnist test mnist. I think it creates a new directory and changes into it. Yeah. So I need to add the data flow create sh file there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to add that data flow create in this right um, before you do train. So right here. Um, does that make that make sense? Right. Yes. 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 Cool. Yes. All right. Great. Um, so then let's just add a little. Okay, let's also add it before running train.sh in examples mnist test mnist py. All right, great. Okay, so then I think this is one is uh, good to go. So, uh, should I hold it? Uh, should we uh, wait for the input flow pull request to get merged? Uh, I think so. Let's do. Let's do this change here um, to the seed stuff. Um, but let's hold off. Let's let's wait. Um, we'll we'll do it after. Like that can be as a part of that pull request because it's just going to be changing this one line. Um, like okay. when that pull request goes through. But let us do do this, um, which I believe is correct. Hopefully it's correct, or else we're going to find out real soon. So come on, GitHub. All right, great. Um, all right, sweet. I think that will do it for now. Um, yeah, I think that's that's good. This this looks great. Um, yeah, now we're uh, now we're normalizing, so that's awesome. All right. So, and then was the accuracy actually? What what's the accuracy on this? 
the accuracy is uh, kind of around the same. It's around the same. Right. Huh. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. Weird. You sh I think you should take a look and check and run yeah. all the commands. Yeah, let's see. So, um, okay, where it is? I'm just going to modify this test file here. It's create underscore data flow okay. dot sh. Thank you. All right, let's see what happens here. I probably should have turned down logging. And not deleted that directory. Damn it. All right. It's going to take around 10 to 15 minutes to run the train command also with the accuracy command because there will be 70,000 records, 70,000 images. All right. Let's see. All right, well, we will run this then and just see what happens because that's a, that's a bit of a long time. Isn't there a way to not delete this thing? I thought there was a way not to delete it. Uh, fine. that uh, oh yeah or is that no do you know uh, what is it okay temp dir how do we do just uh MKD temp, uh, that's what it is. All right, there we go. All right, we'll run this. And logging equals debug. Okay, that seems like a lie, but okay. Oh, because it's uh, all the command line ones don't have debug on. Okay, we'll run it and then I'll go debug it later once I've got all the stuff in that directory. All right, cool. So who's up next here? Also, uh, after this, uh, so, uh, should I start with the, my project stuff? Yeah. Yes. So, so and, uh, yeah, how's that? How's the planning on that scikit stuff going with the images? Were you going to do scikit images first, right? Or OpenCV? Uh, I'm going to do OpenCV first. Okay. Uh, so, should, should I, uh, can you give me some starters on uh, how should I start with that? All right. Um, I'm gonna get you on that offline, um, and I'll okay. I'll circle back with you on that because I think yeah, this meeting we're we're running long today, so I'll I'll just show you some notes um, later. Okay. 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 So. Where to start? All right, uh, Sudhanshu, did you have anything you want to talk about? Or let's see, we wanted to do the operation stuff. So I still had in, it looks, I think you might need to do git add dash f um, for those SVG files. Yes. Yeah, let's see, where did they go? I think I, I added it, but uh, like it actually worked on my PC, but. It didn't push up? 
Yeah, I did push it. Okay. Yeah, because they're showing up as, or they were showing, yeah, they're showing up as deleted still for some reason. Um, yeah, but uh, I actually added it uh, with the same name. The same name, okay. Um, it not, uh, yeah, it's not here. So can you maybe sort of share your screen or something and we can try to figure it out? Okay, let me see. Any luck? Yes, yes, yes. I'm actually trying to open the editor here. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, it's opening. Uh... Right, looking good. We can see. Okay, so uh, okay. So where are the images? Yeah. So here are the images. So like, uh, I added these three images here. And uh, like when I try to generate the docs, uh, 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 then it shows in the docs. Like the images are appearing in the docs, but. I don't okay. Know what's wrong with uh, it's got to be so. It's got to be a Git issue, and sometimes this happens here. And I think it's might because we added some some Git stuff to the to the Git ignore, um, or some image extensions to the Git ignore. So can you try to go to the the Git um uh, thing on the side there on the left hand side with the little the branch, um, or yeah, just open a terminal that works too. All right. Yeah, so do like a git status or something. Uh, it's all clean. Okay. Mm. All right, so try git add dash f. Uh, 
and then um, sorry so git add dash f and then the path to those images so docs or wait a minute let's see docs images should I data flow wait a minute. yeah so why is it not appearing in the pull request uh, that's weird okay um, so, like actually I actually work on the git pod also and in my own environment also okay yeah so maybe so that has something to do with it changes in so and this is under your new ops branch um, added updated images yeah and here they are why are they not showing up under the pull request okay, maybe we're seeing an issue with github then it's probably just like a display issue or something because um, sometimes they display the wrong thing I've noticed when they show pull request tiffs. So like I have like this git pod open here. Okay, let's see. Um. Yeah, so here also like uh, I have imaged, added the images and stuff. But yeah. Showing. Yeah. Huh, okay, okay. So, what the hell? I wonder. Okay, added updated images yesterday. And here they are. Why are they not showing up? This is really weird. Yeah, okay, so I'll show you what I'm seeing right now. Um, let's see. Nice. So in the docs, uh, this is the latest docs here. All right, perfect. Yeah, so this is looking good. Um, let's see. I think, you know, what might work for us is, I think Yash had figured this out last year, that if we change the, um, if we change the uh, so here. branch that this is pointing at, it might... Um, so yeah, the uh, the updated the images. Yeah. Nice, perfect, perfect. So let's see if we also can change down here. The updated images. Nice. And uh, this one also is updated. Yeah. Let's see. Um, let's see. This one looks like we might have an issue, though. Um, let's see. Because, let's see. This is all a bunch of disjoint operations, is what that's showing us. Because um, none of them were connected. Hey, everyone, like, I got someone to go so I'll be talking about. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Have a good one. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. All right. So it's still showing these. Okay. So I think what you might want to do is push this stuff to a new branch um, because GitHub is not displaying this correctly. Um, well, get, it's either, let me, let me just pull it down and, and we'll check at it. We'll look at it locally. Um, so. Sure. Uh, you can try changing the target branch too, like we did last year. I actually just did that. Yeah, that's what I just did, but I wasn't presenting. So you guys didn't see. That's what I meant when I said that you, you had discovered that last year. Um, so let's see. Um, so let's do git checkout. 
new ops get pull. Um, yeah, all your images are there. Okay, it's just a display issue with GitHub. GitHub is not displaying correctly. Um, so that's dumb. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm sorry. That's a, that's a GitHub bug. Because um, they're all here when I pull them down locally. So, let's see. Okay. Um, let's just, I think, okay. And then you were saying, what was that issue that you were saying you were facing? It has to do with the test and the serv uh, HTTP yeah, service. It was actually the yeah, course domain. Uh, it was showing like. This error. Interesting. Okay, so CD exam. at the bottom of the PR, like I have added a comment. So I saw that. Yeah, that was helpful. Okay. Um, that's weird. You know, what's even weirder is that mine. So like, oh, okay, but this is. is Okay, HTTP server. Okay, and this is, oh, so this is one of the commands that gets run in the tutorial, not in the poor, or not yes. in the CI checks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. For HTTP deployment tutorial. Okay, let's see. Server object has no attributes, course domains. Good, good catch on that, so... Service HTTP. Um, so, of course, domains. And what line was it? It was line. Uh, what line is that? Let's see. Looks like line 631. So. Yes, 6.30. Okay. Um, so actually this error started occurring like after I merged the master branch into my branch. Yeah. Before that it was working fine. Okay, so... The one thing that I'm seeing that's a red flag here is that it looks like um, we're running the HTTP service from site packages rather than the development version. Um, so can you flip into git pod and run this command again? Um, but first, before you run it, we're going to run something else. Um, so let's see. So let's do uh, pip uninstall ffml dash service dash hdp all right sweet um, okay well all right well okay then pip all right well, let's try um just pip install um and then do you usually install on things with git pod or let's see with git pod do we install the dash dash local um when, when you've installed things in here before, do you do dash dash prefix equals local, or do you just do install? No, like I just do pip install uh, minus e dot dev. Okay. All right, cool. So let's do pip install minus e and then uh, service slash HTTP. Uh, yeah, or sorry, no, yeah, just service slash HTTP. So, all right, sweet. Now do, okay. Yeah, so after this, do the same thing, but do pip install dash e service slash HTTP. So this is gonna install the HTTP service in development mode here. Uh, uh, slash instead of hyphen. Yeah, sweet. Is 
back to it? Yep. Okay. And now let's run that command that was giving you trouble. Okay, so I guess that was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, we got to do, uh, uh, do, um, yeah, but do, so when you do this, do dash E, and then, um, so pip install dash E, and then dot dot slash, dot dot slash config loader slash YAML. Yeah, so because we're installing the development version, so the one you have checked out of the YAML config loader. Okay, and then this is interesting that your git pod is uh, Python 3.8. So yeah, run that command, this, the HTTP service again. Yeah. Unexpected keyword argument presentation. Okay, oh, we lost Ogden. All right, let's see. Um, Okay, so this has to do probably with some of those changes that happened recently. Um, so, so let's take a look at this guy. Um, examples, should I? Let me run that same command that you are, so we're on the same page here. Um, All right. Um, all right. Now I'm getting the same error as you. So let me present my screen, and we can jump over that. Uh, present. I think so it changed the presentation mode. Yeah. So should this be output mode? Uh, let's see. Was it presentation mode or output mode? Uh, I can't remember. Let's see. Uh, it's in the docs. Uh, let's see. HTTP API and then data flow. Okay. It is output underscore mode. Yeah. Yeah. So now uh, it's working fine here. All right. Great. So let's see. The one thing I am concerned about here, though, is that um, is that it looks like that um, the picture that you have up on the Dataflow deployment tutorial. Um, yeah. So the last picture you showed here. Yeah. So it looks like this may not be connected as it's supposed to be. Um, so let's see what happened here. Um, let's see. So, um, let's see. Uh, what is that file? What's that YAML file? Or oh, it's should I die YAML? Uh, it should I deployment deploy MC HTTP should I dot YAML? Okay. Okay. Oh, that's that one. Okay. So I'm actually looking for the override one, I think. Okay. So. Okay. So git log dash p. Um, okay. I'm just checking it out here. So let's see what happened. They did the play directly. Okay. Transform to repo. Okay, yeah, I think we lost. Let's see what happened. Yeah, we lost the trans. Let's see, wait a minute. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I see what's happening here. Let's 
so we got mapping create because we used to have this file edited by hand so the override file um, here I'll show my screen um, let's see uh, okay. okay I think we need to also automate the uh, we need to automate more of the testing on these guys let's see um, uh, where did that go all right so here um, so yeah we've gone I mean we've done this with a few things right but what you're finding is that uh, we have to go through and, and test everything manually so we have to we gotta at some point we'll need to go through and make all these commands run in an automated fashion um, but so it looks like what happened here okay um, so before we sort of hand edited this file I think a little bit um, and now we are generating it and we need to do uh, I think this might be another case where we sort of need to use some SED commands um, we can use the seed stuff um, to add these. So, right, it looks like you, we regenerated the file, and, and when we regenerated the file and you committed the regenerated file, we ended up losing some of this stuff in seed, right? Um, and so then we also, what we had done before is when we hand generated the file, we had this transformed a repo, which was basically it was the same thing as it was called it was dffml.mapping.create, but we're calling it transform to repo um, because that's what it's doing. Um, it's transforming the the directory into the the value of the the repo value, right? Um, into a, a dictionary, right? So what we did here, let's see, we're gonna need. To modify, let's see, this is the operations, and here's the flow. So the key is coming from seed, um, and so we still need to add that key to seed, and then the value is also coming from seed, but we need to take the value and we need to make it come from that PyPy package contents directory, and so that's basically like the same thing we just talked about where um, uh, where we're going to need that input flow modification on the data flow create command um, because then we won't have to hand edit this file right um, but I think what we can do is we can use that um, uh, um, we can use that uh, SED command kind of like Sakshan was using to basically just take value value and make it into PyPy package contents directory um, so let's see here um, and where is the command that's going to generate this command or yeah generate this file so There's got to be one somewhere, right? Um, is there? Let's see. So, oh, wait. Because we're under. Should I? Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. Okay. Ah, here we go. So this is the create command, right? Um, so, yeah, what we're going to need to do on this one is we're going to need to make it so that um, so that uh, okay, first thing we need to do is we need to do what we talked about with the seed, right? And so we need to make it so that um, we're adding those seed inputs. Um, so let's see. Uh, Example: Should I should I deploy override? Should I? So oops. And what we want to do is look at the history of that file. 
Okay. And it looks like we had, so for the seed values here, we have this, um, okay, so the definition is key, uh, or so no, it's, yeah, key equals definition, because this is backwards for some reason. Uh, we need to fix that. Um, or let's see, no, yeah, sorry. It is key uh, directory equals key, and then so that will create this instance here, and then we have this other one of get single spec. Um, so we can do safety check number of issues, bandit output, and language to comment ratio. Although I'm a little bit skeptical of these um, because I think with the stuff that we recently did to change um, how uh, I think we may we may have uh, we may have done something interesting here when we changed the way that um, uh, when we changed the way that the uh, the operation names and stuff worked. So let's see. Uh, let's grab this stuff here. Uh, sorry, I was disconnected because of internet issues. Yeah. Okay. I saw that. I wasn't sure yeah. what you missed there. So I, basically, I, what we're doing is is we're trying to make it so that we're we're going to add this dash seed command or dash seed argument to the data flow create command so that we end up with the same stuff that we used to in here. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so then the thing that we had just talked about previously with that input flow mapping would basically be so like when we had we used to have this thing called transform to repo, which is the same as mapping create. Um, only what we did was we had said that the the key is coming from the seed, which is the thing that we just added here, where we said you know the directory equals the key, and that's going to create this instance here. And then the other thing that we had in the seed seed was the get single spec, um, and so then the value of that was basically all these definitions that we wanted as the output. So we're going to put that in here as the other seed value. Um, and then that will generate a seed section in this file that's going to be the same as we used to have. Um, and then the other thing that we're going to want to do is since we don't have that dash flow stuff that we just talked about, we're going to, which would allow us to set the, the, um, that would allow us to set instead of value is value, it, we'd be able to do um, value is this pi 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 catch contents directory. We're going to have to use that sed command like Sakshom did there. Um, so we are going to then do this pipe to SED, um, and we'll edit this, and we'll say, let's see, so it would be value, value ends up being, um, let's see, what was it here, it's value, um, um, of backslash n, and then one, two, three, four, oops, yeah, five, oops, five, six, and then pi pi package contents directory. So this isn't beautiful, right? But it's, uh, it's what we're going to do until Augen gives us that pull request. Um, so now we'll try running this and see what kind of YAML file we get here. Um, okay, so, oops. Okay. Um, doesn't like that get single spec. Let's see. Um, oh, we didn't actually add get single to this command. That's weird. Okay, now there we go. All right, and now if we do git diff, okay, it looks like we end up with, um, yeah, so we got this seed section back like we wanted, right? So this, that was deleted here is now back in. 
Um, it looks like somehow we never had get single in there in the first place, which is weird. Um, what could have possibly happened there? That's really odd. Um, because how was it? How was it working? Um, that just doesn't make any sense. Um, okay, that's weird. Well, I guess we didn't have get single. Maybe we were automatically adding get single in the past or something. Um, so yeah, so we've got get single. We have the seed values are correct. Um, and now we have this PyPy package contents directory. So if we then do that, um, the visualize or the diagram command, so we should be able to take that and we should be able to uh, throw it to the diagram command um, as well. So DFFML. Or, oh yeah, we got to merge them too. Um, let's see. Let's see what is the command. It's in the in the docs here. Um, so use cases, data flow deployment, combining operations. Uh, okay, so that was the command we ran. Yeah, we must have had this um, doing get single on its own before or something. Okay, and then we generated this file. Yeah, because we should end up with something that looks like this, right? Where we end up with this going over the package contents turning into the lines of code to comments. Um, so then we run this. Yes, yes. Uh oh. Unhashable type list. Definition name and definitions. Oh no, did we not update the, uh, yeah, we didn't update that. So, ah, uh, crap. Okay. Okay, I think what's going on here, so, well, we have a pretty big code ga code base now. It's hard to keep track of all this stuff, okay. So I think what happened here was, and this is why we need to automate the running of this, uh, of these examples, um, or of the documentation. Um, because it makes it difficult to track everything. So vim, diff, or yeah. So I think or we're in should I here? So I think what diff of uh, CLI data flow. Okay, yeah. So it's the diagram command. I believe wasn't updated to deal with when the um, so when we when we updated that syntax um, oh, we lost them so Sakshan when we updated that syntax recently to do uh, we, we updated that syntax recently to grab specific definitions out of there I don't think we updated the diagram command to handle that um, and I think uh, that's uh, what we're hitting. Your voice cut off. Uh, oh. Sorry, can you repeat what you just said? So I think what we're hitting here is the fact that when we updated the um, the input flow stuff so that we can grab specific definitions from specific um, yes. origins, we didn't upgrade the diagram command. Um, oh, right. Yeah, so data flow to flow to items, input flow. Um, Let's see, input flow, items that inputs, source and sources. Yeah, dot items, let's see, where are we hitting this? Definition name in definitions. Or wait a minute. Is this what happened? Let's see, it looks like, oh no, it might be the merge command. Um, Oh, the merge command, I might not be able to handle this thing, this situation here. Let's see. Looks like his internet's still down. Maybe we can just have this. Uh, let's see. Um, where'd the merge command go here? Ah, uh, yeah, okay, so that's what's going on. Yeah, so... Uh, let's 
Let's see. Oh, we still don't have him back yet. Do you guys have anything else you need to talk about today? I just wanted to ask you about the Windows error. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's let's talk oh. about that until he jumps back on then. Yeah. Uh, have you run DFF mill on Windows like the test? Yeah. I'm getting that one. Uh, that one one triple zero six one. Yeah. Again and again. Okay. Let's... And I tried disabling the firewall and stuff, but it didn't work. Huh. Like, it's a very popular issue on Stack Overflow. Oh yeah. And... <laughs> oh great. Yeah, never knows. Uh, Windows. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I wonder what tests we're running here because that will sort of give us some. So. You're getting similar errors on the. EC2. I, I saw them when you posted it on Yeah. That. It looked pretty similar. Hey, so Sudhanshu, I think we figured out let's see, we were just doing this real quick. Well, it looked like you dropped there. So can you hear us again? Uh, yes, yes, yes. All right, yes. great. All right, so I think so what we actually uh, yeah. yeah, go for it. Yeah, so actually uh, we got a warning like uh, we are going to hit a cyclone or something in Mumbai, so like internet connections are going to be down for some Oh, time. geez. All right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's why internet is shaky. Oh, wow. That's crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, good. Yeah, I hope that it, I hope that all goes well. So, um, I think what happened here is that um, uh, that okay. So this merge command that merges two data flows when we updated the syntax uh, you probably remember like when Sakshan was doing that thing where we wanted to edit the features for the data flow pre-processing source um, he had to, we had to introduce this new syntax where um, you'd have the origin like seed and then the list of definitions from that origin that would be accepted um, and so uh, when we did that I think merge is not dealing with that nicely um, so I think we'll probably want to just like, we can just print out like what the, what the merged is. Um, and we can kind of look at that right now. So JSON dumps merged, um, you know, actually we're going pretty long here, so I might just circle back with you guys. Cause I know it's probably getting late for you guys, but so let's see. If we can look at this Windows issue. So I'm going to, you know what I'll do, um, Sudhanshu, is uh, I'll take a look at this right now and see what's up with this. Um, because I believe sure, this was sure. an issue with, with the fact that we didn't upgrade something. Because like like we said, you know, we, we need to get to the point where we, we have these... Um, all the documentation like in that style that we were writing some of the ex model examples and stuff where we can actually run them with the unit tests um, but we're just not there right now um, so I think that of course if we did that then that would probably ease your pain here of having to rebuild the docs and then copy things over um, but you know and that's why we didn't we didn't get we weren't able to catch this when we when we initially did the did the change um so i'll take a look at this and i'll get back to you and that way uh that way you can you can uh, move on to other things sure. for the night um let's see sure um so let me do so john will uh, take a look at uh new operations okay so sure uh, so issues with merge command. Wow, that's so weird about GitHub not displaying those files or displaying them as deleted. Issues with merge command. Um, uh, probably wasn't updated after um, we added new flow syntax for definitions from C. Um, and then GitHub not correctly displaying uh, diff showing files or showing SVGs uh, removed that are in fact there. All right, okay. And then there's, is there anything else you wanted to talk to me about or any of us or um, before we sort of yeah, move no. on? 
Oh, yeah. So that's it from my side. All right. Cool. Thank All you. right. Hey, thank you. This is going to be really great. That's we. Uh, then, then we'll have this. This tutorial will be up to date with all the latest and greatest advancements yes. here. <laughs> there was a lot more that went into it than than we thought when you went into this. Um, yeah. Yeah. So good job on this. Let's see. Um, and then okay, so Yash, and then we're gonna let me just just make a note about this. So. Uh, okay. Uh, so we uh, investigating Windows errors. Okay, and so the stuff that you're seeing is specifically which one are we talking about right now? Uh, this guy. Uh, uh, yeah, similar to these, like. It's like nested exceptions are occurring. Yeah. You can see that, yeah. Wow, yeah, a lot of nested exceptions. Okay. Um, and then the stupid CSV stuff. Uh, why the hell that happens with the CSV is just ridiculous. So um, that, that's easily fixable. Yeah. Like you uh, in file.py, you just have to replace open and just give it a parameter new line is equal okay, to the code. Okay, sweet. Nice. And we can just so do an if I, nt or something yeah. on that, right? Yeah, so another thing was the failures, the four failures that were occurring. Yeah. Uh, if you scroll down, so there's that date time error. Windows is not actually that sensitive with date time. Yeah, look so at this. Maybe, this is, isn't this crazy? It's like it's showing the exact same time. <laughs> yeah, but then it it's, it's not, not equal. It's sensitive enough. Like huh. if I, I tried making, uh, like I, I just put up a sleep in between those lines and it just worked then. Oh, weird. Huh. Yeah. So um, Linux and maybe and Mac we should. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So maybe, I mean, maybe we should get rid of these checks here. Um, or just say, like, it's within a certain amount of time because um, adding sleeps. I don't like to have sleeps places because the tests, as soon as you start adding sleeps, you know. Uh, is it just sleep zero or what is it? It's the sleep 0 0.01. It's 1 millisecond. 0 0.01. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's compare it within a range um, because, yeah, I hesitate to add sleeps places. Oh, get grab sleep. Is there any sleeps places? Sleep one, sleep 60. Okay, yeah. Oh, then this one is because we're in a bash loop. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't think we, we don't have any sleeps in any tests at this point. Um, except for this example usage of async test case. So I think, yeah, let's definitely let's definitely compare a range here. Um, or like, you know, just as long as it's within the range of like a minute or something, then we can we can say it's good. Um, so let's see for date shoe. Um, let's check that it's within a minute instead of exactly the same or adding the sleep okay and then so and then so you figured out and so. another thing regarding the new line parameter like yeah. for all the modules like all the source uh, all the I, I don't remember all those gzip module lzm uh -huh. module etc all those had like uh, they also have that same parameter, but I do we have tests to look at them? Like, yes, are, are the gzip modules working with CSV? Um, they should, let's see, they should all do every single one unless we change that because I know we at least did that at one point. Like, all of the I think, let's see, to CSV. So they should fail too, right? But they, they should aren't. fail. They aren't failing? Okay, yeah, see, that's... Well, so that could be because we're wrapping it. Like, it gets wrapped, um, essentially. Um, let's see, where is Or this? maybe their open isn't flawed, like this one. Yeah, that's what I'm I thinking, is because that's it. like... Yeah, that's like the I.O. open versus this is like an abstraction around that, right? So where is that um, we should be in testing yeah testing source and then 
file source because I think it's the file source test, yeah, that goes through and does it with every single extension that we know about. Um, so as long as, um, and then wait, why is it? I don't know how to do Visual Studio. Okay, yeah. So if these guys are both file source tests, yeah, and they are, and so is test JSON. Okay, but I think, see, yeah, okay, we may not have had file source test on some of the other ones, um, but test JSON and, and test CSV will probably, right, they, they are doing every single extension, so we should, it, it would have caught them if those were errors there when it gets wrapped. So it's got to be at that base level like you're talking about. Um, okay. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I think if we're going to get exact about it, I think it's... But still, the problem is all the tests aren't running, so I'm not sure that if what all the, is correct or not. What do you mean all the tests aren't running? Like you are getting errors and skipped tests, right? If you look at them. So. Oh yeah, so skipped is skip should be because. Um, so, I haven't installed some of the parameters. Yeah, yeah. So some of the plugins. Right? Yeah. So, but but skip it's should never works, be. But the, but the errors are like they are all related to either i cannot write i had i don't have permissions to write in that yeah. particular folder or something like that and uh, it's been a nightmare on windows yeah okay let's see um, you were getting a similar error to yeah i'm to getting like, the same error so let's see do you know about these permissions like how to give a particular folder um, windows? i tried everything <laughs> yeah, well, the funny thing is we should be making temporary directories everywhere, so we should have permissions on it, right? I mean, this, this is a like... temporary directory, so let's check yeah. this out. Um, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, this is weird. Um, okay, yeah, and then this is funny. So, okay, well, let's figure out, yeah, let's first do these... Um, these permission denied events. So, because CSV source would fail to, uh, it wasn't, and I saw that it was causing an error. So that's yeah. why it didn't run completely. So permission denied. Hmm. So test CSV. Oh wow, this is handy. Okay, let's see. So on the open, permission denied. Uh, okay, let's Google this and see what's up. Because um, my guess is, right, like this should be solvable since we're doing temporary files everywhere. Like it's got to be something like Windows specific that we can tweak. So temp file permission denied. There are Windows. multiple solutions, but none of them work. work. <laughs> okay. All right, name temporary file. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, so maybe this is what's going on here. Um, all right, so name temporary file as file object. Okay, yeah, and obviously we've got it open here. Um, so, and then we open it again, and that's when it fails. So that's what's going on. Um, so, oh, don't you love Windows? Okay, let's see, return object. 
Okay, so you know we might be able to get away with these spool temporary files. Um, let's see if that changing that real quick just sort of fixes it because that doesn't say the same issue here. Um, or but that's not going to give us a name, is it? Yeah, it's not going to give us a name. Oh, well, it's a bummer. All right, okay. Um, let's see. Well, what else do we got from Windows here? What can we use? MKS temp. Any notes about this not working? Return to tuple. Okay, I think we can use with context slip dot closing. Or yeah. All right. Okay, we might have to do this lower level stuff. Um, so. Let's uh, close. Okay, yeah. So this is might be what we need here. So what we should be able to do is the context slip import on this. No. Alright, so we should be able to do context slip dot closing. Oops, 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 oops. Where are we at? Um, oh, you know what might be better? This is probably what's better here. Is we'll just create a temporary directory and then we'll create a new file name in it. Because that's what these tests are doing and they're not failing. So, yeah, there we go. Alright, so... Test file, and then we can just do test file dot path lib dot path test file dot write text um, inspect dot clean doc. Wow. Okay. Yeah, this should probably this should probably save us some trouble here if we just use a temporary directory. All right, so, and then we've got this file name that we can just use. Um, so test file, and then we can just say test file, and now hopefully it won't mess with us, because um, now it's, it's that's one like write operation right there, and then this is the read, and so now it should be open at the same time. Uh, okay, so let's check how many errors we have, and then hopefully it goes down by one, failures four, errors 10. That or I screwed it up further. I may not have imported pathlib. No, I did not. All right. Good job checking this out, Yash. This would be great if we can actually get Windows support into the next release. What is the coverage right now? I haven't seen it for a while. The coverage should be at like 88 or 89. It's been hovering around there for a while. It kind of fluctuates yeah, you between have 88 so and many tests. Yeah, we have a lot of tests. I mean, everybody's been really good about making and keeping the tests up to date, so that's good. Sometimes we kind of forget to do it, but yeah, let's see. 
Yeah, well, we're doing pretty good here. I think I know I know the output operations are still a place where this is lacking. Um, uh, we ooh. haven't added the edit command test through. Our oh, test the edit code. command. Yeah, that would be good too. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, yeah, and we're well, we're mostly we're we're doing pretty good. I mean, we're doing pretty good. Of course, the data flow stuff is always. Uh, it's kind of it's 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 tricky stuff. Um, okay, so yes, errors nine. All right. Okay, good so far. Hopefully that one got it. Um, and then these socket ones are kind of funny. So let's see. Um, we were looking for a CSV. Okay, and yeah, I'm not seeing CSV. So it looks like we fixed that one. Um, so let's just sort of add this status. I can upgrade them. All right, yeah. So if you want to just, um, yeah. So I'll just, what I'll do is um, I can just post this diff here. And you can just grab this, you know, and apply it to because I assume you have a branch going right where you're looking at these. So, um, so, oh no, oh no, I didn't see this message with Naeem. Okay, ah, crap. Oops. All right, okay. So then you can use that, and then. I think, let's see, um, looking at the rest of these, so these are those that are related to open. Um, so, and then, so we'll just do this and then that way it comes through. So, and then these guys are related to sockets. Um, so URL open, an attempt was made to access a socket in a way that is forbidden by its permissions. Wow. Okay. What am I? What am I supposed to do when I create a socket? Not make a TCP connection? It's, uh, it's kind of a pretty standard thing to do. Let's see. Antivirus. But you said this wasn't the case, basically, right? You disabled everything. It's still doing it. Most of them are related to Dart only. Like most of the people get got it fixed with Dart, but I had no luck. Yeah, you I, didn't have I even disabled Windows Defender. I don't have any other antivirus. Mm. Okay, so then I think another thing that we might want to try here is um, is that if we enable the CI tests on Windows, um, so basically, like if we look at at, at how GitHub Actions does Windows uh, support, and we figure out how to turn it on there. They probably don't have like you know whatever firewalls and stuff um, that we might be experiencing locally. Um, so that might be another thing to try. Uh, okay. Yes, but we should not need to be admin to make a socket connection. This is insane. Okay, McAfee. What? These answers might be quite old. Like. Oh I, yeah, I all, fourteen. I, I searched for answers and all were like from twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Huh. Yeah. I guess they've even abandoned Windows after that. <laughs> yeah, probably. Okay, so, and it looks like it's actually coming from, uh... Okay, so I, yeah, I obviously, I wrote this HTTP test module that's basically a copy of, like, the way that Golang does stuff. Um, so, um, okay, but it should be... Should, okay, let's see. What happens? It could be because we're trying to bind to port zero on Windows, and that may not be a Windows thing. So, Windows bind to any port Python. 
but you have specially like i i saw that you have to mention local host specially for windows and not for other ones and oh i did you have done that in most of the places okay okay i guess binding to port 0 should do it um let's see yeah i mean i feel like this is it should be right um so my only other thing is okay you know i'm slightly worried that windows is one of these situations so on linux so i i did all this this work here to basically like run the http server with this uh, i modified the http the standard built-in http server to like run it through a select loop so that you can uh you can you you'd get the notification on the bind event um so that because what what will often happen is if you start an HTTP server, like if you start some server process bound to a port, and then you uh, try to make a connection to it, it'll be like I'm not actually bound to that port yet. So like throwing it through the select loop lets us catch that event. But I'm a bit worried that maybe that's not what happens on Windows, and it's like you can't do that because it's not actually bound yet, even though it's supposed to have been bound yet. Um, so or in fact like the whole oh, why um, would that be that way like it doesn't even make sense uh well in, okay in... so why would why would what be what way like you described uh, I, i'm just like why is that happening in windows only like so it could be because the way that i wrote the select group loop doesn't run quite right on windows actually that would be the first thing we should check here is oh i don't know if i can actually clone down stuff right now can i um let's see um git clone git at github.com pdx johnny slash http test let's see if we can do this like right now how many yeah. failures were you getting uh, sorry, errors. Um, After updating that CSV source. Well, nine because it dropped by one. Uh, because we only fixed the permissions issue on that one source. I'll just try it. On. Let's see. So let's just try. Aha. Uh -huh. Perhaps, yeah. So this is perhaps what the bigger problem here is, is that um, I had not tested this HTTP test library on Windows. Um, and it looks like that's what the problem is, is that the underlying library that I'd been using to write the HTTP servers that I was saying I copied the way that Golang does it, I didn't test this on Windows, and so it doesn't work on Windows. Um, so and I basically what what happens is I I made this thing so that we can spin up, uh, well you can look at it on GitHub but basically like if you look at the way that Golang does it I really liked that way and so I wanted something that did it for Python but like um, lots of things like don't quite do it like that um, so it looks like this is exactly what I was talking about here with this select loop. Um, uh, where did it go? Where did it go? I just saw it. Oh, there's lots of errors. Um, yeah, this. All right. It doesn't like this. Um, and this is basically like, this is, so this is how, this is what I was saying by, like on Linux and so, you need to you need to catch the fact that um, you need to let's see. Let me just open it. Um, so basically, we 
subclass from the standard library server and we um, wait for the um, so you, you you create a socket you bind that socket right and you bind it to port 0 and when you bind it to port 0 that tells the kernel right the OS to say assign me any available port number um, and when you do that um, it comes back and then it says okay like you're bound to a port and then you have to make the listen call um, and the listen call says all right now start waiting for incoming connections and, and like at least on I'm not familiar with Windows but at least on Linux you you say that you use the listen system call and you give it like a number of incoming connections that it can have like in the kernel queue is my understanding of like okay like you know when I the kernel is is looking for incoming packets and it's get, it's looking at the port number that those packets are sent to and then it says okay like how many of these for a TCP connection um, it says okay how many of these can be like in the queue um, before like how many of these can be in the kernel queue before I have to have the user space process um, that's actually you know that's our Python code except you know those incoming TCP connections and so it has to come right so we've got so we for example say for example you issue the listen system call and you pass it the number 10 and now you go into the kernel and the kernel says okay like I am setting up this socket that I've assigned a random port to and uh, I'm going to have at most 10 incoming TCP connections um, like queued up and if I get any more than 10 before I can go and run like time slice run my user space process which is our Python code I'm gonna just like kick them to the curb and say okay I, you have to come back later I'm not gonna send the uh, um, what is it the sin awk I'm just uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna just drop it right or I think you might I can't remember what the TCP handshake is but they might just drop it and it might send a reply saying like I can't handle you right now um, and so but basically the first time through that listen call um, uh, it's going to get its file descriptors can be in three states. They can be in read, write, or error. Um, and so the first time through, after you issue that listen system call, it's going to come back and it will be in the read state. And once it's in the read state, that means it's actually ready so that if you issued a connect call from a client or another machine, that the kernel will put that TCP connection into that queue, right? So that queue that's 10 long, it's going to say, okay, I'm, I'm ready to like, okay, here's, here's one connection that comes in. You're first in the queue. And then because the file, but it wouldn't have done that unless it could be in the read state. Right. Um, and this is the main socket. Right. Um, and so what we do is um, once it comes in, it puts it in the queue, and the file descriptor, and and it it basically issues like an event on that file descriptor that if you're using the select system call, it's going to come back in the um, it's going to be in the the select system call basically gives you three lists of file descriptor. You pass it in three lists, and then it gives you back three lists, and those are subsets of the lists you passed in that are in those states. So if you say I want to check if these ones are read, and I want to check if these ones are write, and I want to check if these ones are error. Or maybe you just pass in a whole bunch of them. I can't quite remember. But the point is it gives you back a subset that are in each state. And it's going to say now that the main file descriptor, which you bound, this is this listening server socket. And it's going to say that's in the read state because you've got an incoming connection, right? And so that's like what, what we're, that's like, that would be the second iteration of this loop. But the first iteration of this loop, and that was, so that would be like, handle a request non-block right because um let's see wait a minute um let's see well true yeah event read um so one of these is basically like the shutdown event and one of them is that um yeah self is going to be the one that's actually the one we're listening on um so if the fd is not file num then we close it 
otherwise we handle the request. Um, oh yeah, so this is this is basically saying because this is the pipe here, and so if we call stop background, it sends something to the pipe, and then it says, okay, well that's not our file number, so we're going to close our socket and exit out of here. So we're done serving. Um, but the point is, the first time this comes through, it's going to. Uh, uh, well, I guess that's okay. So it does the listen call and then it immediately calls serve forever. And when it calls serve forever, um, it's already bound. And then this stuff is just to make sure that um, we uh, we either handle incoming requests or we close the server. Um, so you, I explained a lot more that wasn't actually related to what that was doing, but now you know how that works um, or how sockets work um, and select works so let's see um, yeah so my guess here is basically I mean long story short I'll take a look at this library on Windows um, because clearly it doesn't like this select call I would believe is what's going on um, but yeah and then but I think this should just be really affecting the um, the HTTP caching stuff, um, yeah, the net stuff, and then is it affecting anything else? Or okay, the rest of these are probably similar things where we need to create a temporary directory and then just a random file name within it. Um, and these ones yeah, are something I'm that I'll handle. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry for that long-winded explanation, but hopefully oh, no, you learned okay. something about select and stuff. And that's that's actually something that people have been. I think Agen asked me this recently, and somebody else asked me this recently, which is like, you know, like I'm interested in networking stuff. Um, what do I do? Um, and so I would say like play with play with the play with the select system call and like the pull system call and stuff, and and you know, writing some servers with with like the 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 more low-level Python code or the C code. Um, and I mean, it's going to be easier with Python and I would do it on Linux so you don't run into weird stuff. Um, but it'll definitely, it's definitely enlightening and it's fun to do. Anyway, so do you guys have anything else you want to talk about today or else I'll let you go because I know I, I we went way over. But there was a lot, a lot to do today apparently. I'll just open a pull request tomorrow. I'll okay. Sweet. Thanks. I don't have anything. Just uh, you just uh, send. Uh, can you like we can discuss about the yes, my yeah, project for yeah, your project and so, and, and the uh, the OpenCV operations. Yeah, that sounds good. Stuff, yes. Yep. Sweet. All right. Um. Let's see. So. Um. So me. Um. HTTP test tests on Windows. Oops. Ah. Fix HTTP test on Windows. And um, yes, okay. So yes, I got that. All right. Was there anything else that you guys can remember that I was, let's see, on the hook for right now? Let's see. I think we're good here. Sweet. Thanks, guys. Sorry, I'm sure it's late. Um, but have a good night, and I'll uh, talk to you later. All right. Thank you. All right. And get rest. Thanks, guys. Bye.